Hi all, I am Dr. Manacheri. In this video, we are going to conduct the meta-analysis of themes in major world religions or cultures and the philosophies of life related to excellence that we have mapped in our work. Further, we extend the same to the major practices of silencing the mind across various world cultures. My daughter, Annie Maria Menacheri, is moderating this short video. We live in a data, information, knowledge and wisdom hierarchical world and we are going through the wisdom era. We live in an era of big data analytics and deep learning to understand the meta trends to generate algorithms. Wisdom is not a single minded narrow approach. On the contrary, the scientific approach towards wisdom is understanding the meta trends and perspectives so as to understand it as a whole. Let us now try to understand the meta perspectives and trends through various cultures and philosophies that have influenced this universe. Lord Buddha, who lived in the 4th century, taught very clearly that Desire is the root cause of all sufferings. Again, the karma fella is the term that he used to relate and to mention about the past or about sin. Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher and mystic who lived in the 5th century before Christ, talked about Tao, which means the way without goals. He demonstrated great courage to tell people that there are no goals but only way. Let's hear too how our Captain Cool, the epitome of silence, an astute practitioner of the present moment, practiced the Tao principles in his life. I am Sumit. Uh, MS, where did you see yourself while you were retiring or while you were done playing cricket? Have you achieved what do you wanted to achieve from cricket? You know, when I started cricket, khelna start kiya tha, to first of all, I never thought that I would play for India. Ke uh, I think India was the first tour I completed, I had performed well. At that time, I knew that I was going to play for India, whether I will play for 6 months or 3 months. So, I never thought that I would play for this, that I would like to achieve this. You know, this is my personal milestone. When we play cricket from school, or when we play cricket in the park, our only motive was to win a match. You know, whatever the other teams are against, they are against us. So, that is the point. The purpose, you know, you know, so uh, it is it's not about milestone. What it's about is uh, that is the purpose, you know, you know, so it's it's not about milestone. What it's about is you know how much you can contribute, how good you are, and then you take it. Uh, I'm somebody who lives in the present, so uh, I don't think too much about the past or the future. But I've kept saying I take learnings from the past. Of course, you need to have goals for the future, but I know the most important thing is the present. It was Lord Krishna who, around 33th century before Christ. Advised Arjuna. Karma When it rings, shift the believer's attention and awareness to the prayer. 
The second session set up the context to the prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The context here is about the will of Jesus Christ's father Abba. His will is to transform earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our, those who sin against us. Represents the dimension of time that is the past. The word sin represents the past traumas, negative experiences, unethical past actions or bad karmas and the inability to unlearn and relearn and finally to forget and forgive the past negativity. Hence, we carry the painful experiences of the past and live in the present with pain, guilt, prejudice and anxiety. Thus, our present life becomes suffering. Give us this day our daily bread represents the dimension of time, the present. As the present, the here and now is the only existential reality. Because our experience, our activity is connected only in the now. And lead us not into temptation, represents the dimension of time, the future. As temptation is the future to occur or unveil in the time and space. Both past and future are not experiential realities. Also, not existential in nature. Future and past are the creation of human mind and emotion. The sad part is that our psychological reality has overpowered our own true existential reality. That is, our experience in the here and now. Let's discuss about the process capability systems or the six sigma practiced by the industries to reduce error to 3.4 in a million opportunities. Excellence always deals with the here and now approach or the way. Let's discuss about the practices of excellence. Meta-analysis revealed that all masters or self-realized individuals or gods as per respective believers have similar calibrated perspectives about heaven on earth that is to be excited to do the action with full energy enthusiasm and exuberance in the here and now let's conclude about the mindfulness practices in the scientific communities and cultures the yogic system in the Hindu way of life in India. The Vibhasana with Buddhist traditions in India and Japan. The Zen practices in India and Japan. The Sufi meditative practices in the Middle East. The Taoist meditative practices in China and others. The Kabbalah and Kavana practices in Jewish mysticism and mindfulness practices in psychiatric and psychological domains across the world. Let's now do a thematic analysis about this metadata. Thematic analysis is used within qualitative research. It emphasizes analyzing, interpreting and identifying the patterns of meanings, terms and trends in qualitative data. Meta-analysis interprets the patterns that have influenced the broader cognitions of a major group of people to bring forth a common theme. Now, the author of the book would conclude about the thematic analysis of excellence. We are evolving through a wisdom era. Two simultaneous industrial revolutions are happening on 21st century. The fourth one is that of artificial intelligence, internet of things, big data, robotics, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. Whereas the fifth one is that of wisdom era, an era of meta-analysis of information, knowledge to raise the bars of religion, ethnicity, city, culture, and the connection of innovation to inclusivity and purpose. Inclusion and purpose is what we must. The parable of blind men and the elephant, when a group of blind men went on to experience an elephant, would be the most appropriate case 
for this chaos and sufferings. The moral parable is that humans have the tendency to claim absolute reality based on their limited subjective experience as they ignore other humans' limited experiences, which may be equally true. Most interestingly, human beings fought each other, killed each other to defend their own perspectives. When we look at the history of world wars, the first and the second, the majority of the conflicts, chaos, sufferings, and homicides, we may observe that all was to prove the supremacy of blood, country, culture, and the isms, communism, or the socialism, or the capitalism that we believe in. And for the divergent religious perspectives that includes holy wars and the present COVID-19 pandemic, all this has happened because of the lack of awareness and understanding about the whole, the gestalt. Wisdom and the fifth industrial revolution is that transcends all other revolutions and coverage to encompassment, inclusion, and love, and awareness. It's about code. Once we understand the meta perspectives, we raise ourselves to higher level of awareness. We become more and more silent and our nature would transform to silence, understanding and awareness. This work we have named as a sense of excellence. We have used a methodology called thematic analysis, a methodology used in qualitative research. In this methodology, Qualitative data is coded and categorized and themes are considered for theory formulation is done. Let me briefly explain what Lord Krishna told us and its thematic analysis. Krishna's advocacy is differentiated to three dimensions of time. That is the past, the present and the future and coded as one, two, and three. The explanation was given by Miss Annie Maria previously. Similarly, the thematic analysis of Lao Tzu, Lord Buddha, Lord Jesus Christ, Dr. Sigmund Freud, and the process approach and Six Sigma are also differentiated to three dimensions of time, the past, the present, and the future, and coded as one, two, and three. Later, the concepts are subcategorized as in the case of past or code one. In, the, in that case, the past karma phalas that influences the present is subcategorized as shown. Karma phalas from the past life are shown as the sanjita karma and the prarabdha karma. Similarly, the karma phalas from the present life such as sin, negativity, and guilt are categorized as subcategory two. Further, themes are developed and a theory of excellence is brought out from this meta-analysis of wisdom literatures. If we look at the solution suggested by this gods or the world's leaders, we may understand that almost everyone had the same approach towards excellence in life. Let's observe Krishna, Ma Phaleshu, Ma Karma Phala, Karmanye Vadigaraste. He advocates doing action in harmony with one's dharma or duty in the here and now without worrying about the results. But how many of us do action in harmony with our duty? Lavutsu aggressively went on to say that there are no goals at all and only the way. He suggested harmony with the way is the solution. Let's consider Lord Buddha, Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone had their own perspectives about excellence as exactly what Lord Krishna Lavutsu told us. However, in their own perspectives, interpreted, followed, adored, and worshipped by their own followers. Although our gentleman Dr. Sigmund Freud's works was majority on mental patients, his solution also lies in awareness, insight, and permissiveness in the here and now. From a process or Six Sigma perspective, preventive action and correction and corrective action that comes out of awareness and understanding in the here and now is the solution. In short, we may conclude that few words would manifest excellence, duty, action, present moment, process or the way, awareness and harmony. Let me take the opportunity to thank Dr. Giselle George, my wife, for collaborating in this work and 
Ms. Annie Maria Manacheri for moderating this video. Thank you for being with us.